So what up guys, it's Caesar back with another NFT video. Now this is another one of my little quick tutorial series. I know that a lot of people have done videos on this before, but when I go on Instagram and look at all the NFT accounts I follow in the comments, I always see a ton of people asking, you know, what are NFTs? Why do they have value? How do you buy them? This and that. So I just made a video how and why NFTs are valuable. So definitely be sure to go check that one out. But today I just wanted to quickly go over how to buy NFTs. Now I always say I'm going to try to, you know, make it brief, but we'll see the last video was 10 minutes again. So I promise you guys, I'm going to try to make this one very simple for any newbies out there that somehow made it to my video instead of the other ones. But I think I can break it down better than anyone. So let's just get right into it. Now, the first thing you need to do is find a marketplace. There's a few different marketplaces you can buy NFTs on, but I recommend OpenSea. I think it's the easiest to navigate. It's the most popular in the community at the moment. They just raised $100 million and are doing a lot of cool different things. They uh, were officially only on the Ethereum blockchain, as many of these marketplaces are. But now they're starting to implement the Polygon blockchain and all these other different things. Now, that is a bunch of humbo jumbo that you don't need to understand right now if you're just trying to buy your first NFT. I think it's definitely valuable to know that stuff before you buy your first NFT, so be sure to stick around. I actually have a few videos on that, so I'll link those in the description if you want to learn about that. But I don't think it's essential to know when you go to buy your first NFT, so just kind of ignore that. But just know that OpenSea is one of the best platforms for buying NFTs and Kevin Durant's investing in them and you know they just have a lot of good things going for them. Now head on over to OpenSea and you can easily see a bunch of super cool projects on the stats page by looking at the top 100 by sales by seven days, two weeks, you know, 28 days, whatever. You can look at the marketplace where there's like 20 million cool digital assets. Now these are not just strictly, strictly on OpenSea, they're also on Rarible and all the other NFT selling platforms for the most part. It depends if it's written into the smart contract of the project, which is more humbo jumbo. You don't really need to know. I'll go over that in, an, in another video if you guys want. But you just need to know that the assets, for the most part, are on every different website. So it doesn't matter if you want to go check out Rarible or some other website. But as I said, I think OpenSea is definitely the easiest, in my opinion, to, to purchase your first NFT. So now that you've found the website you're going to use to buy your first NFT, you need to set up a crypto wallet. Now there's a few... Now there's quite a few different crypto... Now there's quite a few different crypto wallets that OpenSea accepts and they're adding new ones every day. I believe when I looked last time there was like four or five and now there's around like seven to eight, maybe 10 that you can use. And the two main ones I would say is MetaMask and Coinbase. Now I won't be getting too much into the differences between these. You guys can let me know if you want me to do a video on all the different crypto wallets. But I would say MetaMask and Coinbase are your best bet. MetaMask is the oldest crypto wallet, I believe, or one of the oldest. Definitely one of the most respected in the community. I personally use MetaMask to buy my first NFT, and I think MetaMask is definitely a secure platform. At first, I was a little nervous about using it, but I, you know, it's been a long, around the longest, has a great reputation. You know, as long as you don't lose your 10 character key, you should be fine, and be sure never to give out your address to anyone. Not your main address, but your like private key. Just don't share any of your MetaMask information with anyone that if you don't understand what it means. Because you can get your credit card money back, but you cannot get your crypto back. It is is decentralized. There's no one you can you can call to complain about your your MetaMask wallet being stripped. So definitely be aware of that when you're getting into the crypto space. Now on the other hand, we have Coinbase. Uh, what I do think is advantageous about Coinbase is that. Coinbase is obviously a going to be a pretty big company, you know, they had an IPO a few months ago, they've gone public. So I definitely believe that they have a little bit more infrastructure there. Or well, meta, or well, I mean that as, and I don't mean that in terms of like practicality. I mean, MetaMask has definitely been around longer in this space. But with Coinbase being such a big company, I think that if something goes wrong with Coinbase, then you have a bit more of a chance to get your money back, you know, because it's actually a public company that you you can, you know, approach. Honestly, I'm sorry for talking about this, guys. I don't know everything in the world. I'm not sure about MetaMask, what type of company they are, or if they, where they're based or anything. But, you know, like I said, if you lose your money through MetaMask, you're probably not getting it back. But MetaMask is what the most amount of people use. So you can do a little bit more research for yourself or ask me, choose wisely. I don't really think it matters personally, guys. So don't get too caught up on this decision. Uh, MetaMask uh, might have faster transactions than Coinbase, but I'm not entirely sure. But that's if you're buying through the wallet itself. Like if you're buying through the MetaMask extension or on Coinbase. And do keep in mind that if you buy it on Coinbase, 
I'm not sure if it's still like this. You used to have to transfer from Coinbase to MetaMask on the... And do keep in mind that I believe MetaMask might be faster than Coinbase. Don't get me wrong. I, I haven't used Coinbase, as I said. But MetaMask is really easy to download. It's just a Google extension, and Coinbase might have its own extension uh, too, but I know they definitely both have um, mobile apps as well. So get yourself a crypto wallet. Become comfortable with it. So get your crypto wallet. I hope that wasn't too confusing for you guys. It's really not that big of a deal. I would say, for the most part, they're both safe and have around the same transaction times. So boot up MetaMask, go to OpenSea, find the art you want, and then I would suggest purchasing the Ethereum on OpenSea your, uh, itself instead of going through the MetaMask extension because I think, well, the OpenSea fee, I believe, is a little bit higher. Um, well, not OpenSea. Uh, OpenSea manages transactions through MoonPay, not the actual NFT transaction, but they add Ethereum to your wallet through MoonPay, which I looked up and people were saying it's a scam and this and that. And honestly, I'm not sure. It's, it's really hard to tell with these things. You can't find any information about them online. Let me know if you want me to do a video going over the security of these things. But I personally use MoonPay and I haven't suffered the consequences yet. So, but like I said, be careful. Definitely maybe use like a burner debit or credit card for this because if, like I said, if it gets compromised and they buy 20,000 of crypto, I mean, that's, it's, it's going to be really rough to get that transaction reversed. I'm sorry, guys. I really hope that this video isn't scaring away any new investors. I just want to be hundred percent honest with you guys. I don't want to see anyone lose a ton of money. You know, NFTs is a, it's really easy to buy into NFTs and I really think you should. I think it's going to, you know, be huge and I think you'll definitely be happy with yourself for getting, you know, knowledgeable and in the NFT community now. It's only 2021. I, I really truly believe we are the early adapters. Even though, you know, people have been talking about NFTs for a few years, I think we're still in like the top 2.5% of the world. But while it's super easy to get into NFTs, you definitely need to do a bit of due diligence because you can lose a lot of money fast. But don't worry about it too much. I just want you guys to be aware. For the most part, you should be fine. I think MetaMask and Coinbase are safe. And I think that MoonPay, if it's being run through OpenSea, I trust OpenSea as a company. A hundred million dollars of other people's donations and Kevin Durant's million dollar donations also agree. So anyways, you can add funds on OpenSea by clicking the wallet icon to the right of the profile there. And you should see options to add some Ethereum to your wallet if you don't have any. Now you're super close to buying your first NFT. Now the last thing you need to know is you need to know about gas fees. What are gas fees? Gas fees is the fee that you pay when you do any transaction using the Ethereum blockchain. Now, as I mentioned in my last video, which you can go check out, I was saying what are NFTs and why are they valuable? So basically an NFT is valuable because it is a permanent block on the blockchain. Let's pretend that this book is the blockchain because the blockchain is basically just like a record, a ledger, they say it's like record keeping. So your one asset is tied to the blockchain forever. But now to do a transaction on this blockchain to buy this piece of art, you need to pay the gas fee, which is basically the money it takes for this transaction to go through. And it's becoming really expensive with Ethereum because with the popularity of NFTs and a bunch of the uh, altcoins like Dogecoin, Shiba Inu, those all run on the Ethereum network. And the more that goes on on the Ethereum network, the higher the gas fees and the more you have to pay. There's a few websites you can go to that show the gas prices at any given time and actually can predict them in the future. So those are great, great websites to go look at and make sure that you're at, you know, buying at a good time where the gas fee isn't too high. Now you can also edit this. You can go up and on MetaMask at least, you can choose either a higher gas price if you want the transaction to go through now or a lower gas price if you want it, you know, if you are fine with waiting a few days to take your NFT. I would recommend just doing the one that's there. Um, I, that's what I did when I bought my NFT. Now I've never bid on an NFT, but definitely be careful because if you buy an NFT, then you have to pay gas. But if you bid on an NFT, you have to put the money up front and pay the gas. And if you lose, I think you have to pay gas again to get your money back. Like it can be very costly if you bid on things. So just know that if you bid, you are paying for the gas regardless of if you win, if not twice, at least once. So definitely be careful if you're bidding on something and know that you are putting your money at stake 100%. If you're just straight up buying, you should be able to just buy with the price and the gas fee. Now the gas fee can range from anywhere to from 10, as low as 10 to $20 to as high as like 80 or 100. I've seen some ridiculous gas fees. So you do have to be a little bit lucky when you log on and make your transaction. Be sure not to overpay for gas. If you, you know, if you want one NFT really bad and you think there's a chance that it's going to sell out, then you should for sure buy it, I guess. But 
if you can wait, try to wait to buy your NFT until the gas price goes down. Now this is a little different if you're buying on OpenSea. If you find some project you want, a lot of projects, if you find a project early before it drops, you can go to their website and usually on the website then there will be a mint button and it will say, you know, the Ethereum price plus gas. And on that website, you can go there on launch day, click and you can just buy one right through their website and it will show up right on your OpenSea account. And if you're in OpenSea, then you can just find it in OpenSea and purchase it. But now with the gas fee, because of how much transactions are to put Ether in your account, be sure to put some extra Ether in your account. Now I learned this mistake myself, even though I had been preaching in a lot of my videos how bad gas fees are and how to try to avoid them. I made the rookie mistake myself when I bought my first NFT just a few days ago. You guys can watch that video, it's in the description. I spent $90 on a $34 NFT. Now why is this? It was $34. It, the whole transaction was $50.85, I believe, so like a $17 gas fee, which honestly not too bad. And I was in a rush, so I just bought it right then and there. But I had to do one transaction to add $40 worth of Ethereum to my account. And uh, this uh, be careful about this. Even though I knew that I had to pay gas and I should account for the gas, um, when I went to buy it on OpenSea, it allowed me to pay with a debit card and it said add funds to your account because it needed to switch my money to Ethereum and it gave me a set amount. It said like, oh, like I'm trying to buy it for 34, but then it showed like, oh, 47 or something it wanted me to buy. And it turned out being like a $13 fee, I guess. But I was thought it was like, oh, okay, they're making me put 47 because that's the amount of money that this transaction is going to take in total. But no, that was just like, I guess, a fee to get the Ethereum. So I had to put like $47 on, and then I ended up being like, $10 short of the gas. So I had to do another and pay another $13. So like overall, I ended up paying $93 for a $34 uh, NFT, but, but it was worth it guys. I don't know. It really depends on the situation, how badly you want the art, what you're using it for. If there's incentives of uh, guys, I'll make another video on why these things are worthwhile. I covered it a bit in my last video, but just know, you know, if you like the artist or believe in the project or you know, there's an incentive, like you get access to a Discord or some game, then I think that NFT is definitely valuable. I would consider buying it. But don't just be buying into anything all willy-nilly. Definitely do your research. Go on Discords, hop on Twitter, watch, look at some of my videos. Like, don't just throw your money out there because 98% of these projects are gonna tank in five years when the bubble bursts. But if you stick around and learn the community, the projects that do good now are going to be huge in the future. But with that being said, I know I wanted this to be brief. And again, I've talked for 20 minutes here. By the time I finish all these videos, I'm not even going to be able to get them up today. I don't even know what, I, what I'm doing with my life. It's a beautiful summer day. Everyone's at the pool and I am studying NFTs for 16 hours, but I wouldn't want it any other way. I think this is so cool. NFTs is the future. I think there are huge things coming. I've been loving working on this channel and I'm getting more and more passionate about NFTs on the daily. So if you want to stay tuned for all the newest NFT stuff, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and let me know anything that you need help with in the comments. I'll try to reach out to all of you or I'll definitely I respond to every comment, but I'll try to make a video on, on whatever you guys need help with. And in the future, I will, I can help you with anything but creating an NFT project. And I can actually help you with some of that, but I'm like just in the process of doing that. I've spent like the last three days looking at so many videos, trying to learn Solidity code, just trying to learn so many different programs and having my brain explode trying to figure out how to make NFTs. And I'm going to get my collection completed within the next four weeks. I'm definitely trying to do it before I have to go back to class. And there's no videos like that out there. So once I get it, I'm going to release like a five hour step-by-step -step going through every little detail, helping you guys make your NFT project. So if you're interested in that, be sure to stick around again. And I'll stop rambling. I'll get out of here so I can hopefully try to get this video up before it's irrelevant. But love you guys. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Thank you.